Yo, 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 what's good, Lobo fans? This is episode two of the Lobo Pod. It is your guy, Langston Murray. And Jaden Delacerto. And with today, we're going to have more of a serious talk about mental health. We do have a special guest in the building, Rianne Tuck. And she's going to talk to us about mental health experiences and ways to help that. And obviously, resources that you can contact to help with mental health. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to Lobo Podcast. Episode two with Jaden Delacerta and Langston Murray and our special guest. Hi, Rianne Tuck. So give us a little, you know, introduction about yourself. Tell us about you. Hi. So my name is Rianne. Um, I'm from Portland, Oregon. I'm on the UNM softball team and I play first base. So I'm majoring in psychology and I'm in, involved in a lot of different programs here. Um, I'm involved in the social justice committee as well as SAC here on campus and our Title IX program on campus. So I'm kind of really in this mental health program and that sort of thing. And that's what we're going to get into today. So thanks for having me. You know, if you listen to our first podcast, we talked about how we stayed in hotel rooms. Yes. It was really tough. So um, we're going to start with some questions and we'll go from there. OK, totally. So first question is, uh, what have you learned about yourself in the last 18 months that you didn't know before? Oh, boy, this is a great question. So <laughs> since COVID started, really, it, it was such a shock. I don't know how you guys yeah, felt, yeah. but I remember like the day that we got canceled. We were yeah. supposed to go on a flight to San Jose State. Oh, wow. And our coach texted, texted us and she was like, no, go home, like <laughs> right. go home, home, you right. know. And so I was like. Oh my gosh. Right. So I was home for five months and you know, when you're not around your friends or yeah. don't have any resources to go work out, like the gyms are all closed, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Like it was just such an isolating period. Oh yeah. And so through that, I had to learn how to, you know, keep myself busy right. and that sort of thing and find different hobbies. And so I did learn that I love to hike and that sort of thing. Um, I learned that I love to do yoga and meditation. Yeah. That's awesome. Weird, but you know. It's not weird. No, I like hot <laughs> yoga myself. I do hot yoga. But um, that was kind of my thing during COVID. And coming back, it was just really difficult. I don't know, like you guys know what I'm talking about. Last fall when we mm -hmm. got cut off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were like one of the only schools and programs that got totally shut down for the whole fall. Right. Like only a little bit into it, which was kind of just a humbling moment. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if you want to, <laughs> how to describe it, but it was super difficult, but I did learn a lot about myself in that manner of just how to get through tough times and being isolated. Mm -hmm. And so how to like make myself busy and mm -hmm. get things done, even though there was really not much to do, yeah. if that makes right, sense. Right. But honestly, like when I was thinking about this question, I was thinking about COVID in general, I just remember hearing about the football team in the hotel and just how tough that was. So I just kind of wanted to like listen from, from your perspective if you don't uh, mind it. That. It was very tough. Uh, we I touched a, on this a little bit last week in mm. the last podcast. But again, it was just, again, like our coach told us, control what you can control. You know yeah. what I mean? And so obviously with the school aspect of things, we're still being in school and stuff like totally. that. Um, you was Your time schedule was a little bit kind of misplaced if you will because like we have extra means and we have extra you know practice not that we was going over the times or anything like yeah, that yeah. but like we had extra events that we normally wouldn't have if we wasn't in totally. the hotel with our coaches and that kind of thing so just kind of had to pick where mm -hmm. and when you couldn't make it to do homework or you had a quiz and things like mm -hmm. that uh, we had guys like basically we had like a whole ballroom separated it off or a section off or whatever for us to do study hall and things wow. of that nature so we just had our own little world within the hotel i uh -huh. mean for what it was worth the setup was pretty nice as far as like the hotel yeah. is basically just us in there and so we had every ballroom or you can go out in the patio and do homework and stuff like that so it just still took a will yeah you, you, you had to want to do it right yeah. you know what i mean uh -huh. or you can use it as an excuse but just the the mentality that our coach like teaches us we still had to just go in and just execute every assignment that we had, which was go play hard, practice, win on Saturdays, and still take care of your, your academics, you know? So. Totally, yeah. And not even academics, just like your mental health, you know right. what I mean? Oh, like, man. you're stuck in a room. So it was like, tough. I know. And, and that mental health part is like, as far as that goes, we were just sticking together. I mean, we yeah. all, we, us talking about how much we hate being here just kind of made things better. We knew, it, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's not going to expedite the process at all. But uh, again, us just talking about it was a, a good way to just kind of relieve that stress. It's like, totally. Or what we're going to do as soon as we get back or like, uh -huh. you know, just 
I don't know, just looking forward to that day, honestly. And weren't they the only, like, team in the country yes. that did that? Yes, only team in wow. the country that did that. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. I don't know how you did that. Were you able to see family at all? Or? No. Wow. Well, no family, Face no time. fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No Your fans phone. allowed. That's... For real. <laughs> wow. That, must have, that sounds difficult, though, like, not seeing your loved ones or right. that sort of thing. I mean, stuck with the same five people. FaceTime was the closest people. thing we had. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Well, that was, like, really difficult. And right. you guys had to go out of the state right mm -hmm. or what was your deal yeah so we had to stay in a hotel for like 70 plus days you know just living out of suitcases at one wow. point we were able to come back like for four days at least maybe even that and then we would leave again and then one time they we came back from a trip and eddie nunez had this talk with us and he was just like like if you guys want to continue to do this like you guys are gonna have to go on longer like sprees of this so we're like oh my gosh like how long we're talking <laughs> Two weeks. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Let me let me think about this, and I'll, I'll get back to you guys. You know, it's hard, but you know, and I'm glad I did it because at the end of the day, I learned stuff about me and my teammates that I think I've never would have learned. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So it's a blessing in disguise. Yeah, totally. That just I remember when everybody got shut down, and we just kind of got to do our own kind of workouts outside that sort of thing mm -hmm. but I remember hearing about you guys especially and I'll, we were all like oh my gosh do we have to go in a hotel next spring like <laughs> what are we gonna yeah. have to do but I just I just think COVID on athletes in general was just so difficult because this is like our identity so you know like this is this like, is like our what whole we do. life yes. and then it's just like instantly taken oh. and I think that's a good thing though because if you think about it, we used to take that stuff for granted. And now that we take, we, did, we, we did. come now to practice and we're like, okay, let's get it. You know what I mean? I can't oh, take this no. for granted. It could be shut down in any minute. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I took sleeping in my own bed for granted. Yeah, uh -huh. you know I mean? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but after that hotel, you know, I'm sitting there thanking my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I can't imagine being in a hotel for that long though. That's just yeah. crazy. So now that we're talking about mental health and yeah. all of that stuff and how COVID what do you guys think? Is there a stigma towards mental health? What are your guys' opinion on this? Definitely. In athletics, yes, very badly. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I think that mental health in general, just having different mental illnesses, mm -hmm. that in itself is kind yeah. of a taboo subject, yeah. especially with like some coaches, not all, but some, and then with some players. Yeah. Sometimes they don't really think that they have something going on but truly there is but mm -hmm. there's a stigma there that's like no just just work harder just yeah. hydrate just, it'll right. get, <laughs> just get right. some good right. night's rest come back tomorrow you'll be fine <laughs> see you wait seven <laughs> but it it's really bad I think honestly I've had talks with different athletes at different schools that I have friends with and the attitude behind mental health is just like I said, it's kind of just like, oh, you'll be fine. Just push through it. But sometimes that doesn't always work. Sometimes there mm -hmm. is a need for professional help mm -hmm. or that next step of taking action to help right. yourself. But I think there is a stigma behind getting that help. So I think that kind of what I wish would happen or something I want to accomplish in the future is like maybe someday work with the NCAA and just right. get more advocates on campus to give people resources. Yeah. I know that I'm fighting for that right now with Title IX and to do with sexual assault and that sort right. of subject. But mm -hmm. just one in general for athletics would be so yeah. helpful, I think. But I feel like in general, a high percentage of people don't even want to come forward mm -hmm. with mental health because like the the instant connotation is that you're crazy or you, know, yes. you got problems. And that in a sense can be embarrassing to the person that's dealing with the mental health. Yeah. You know, of even course. though I support mental health, you know, I, I myself am like a, just a firm believer in just like introverted in, in a certain yeah, way you yeah. know what i mean it just i handle all my my problems on my own not that i'm just yeah. having any crazy problems but like majority of us would rather do that than look crazy or look like you got uh -huh. you know the, your world is in you know what i mean so yeah i'm really big about that on social media like talking about my own issues that i've gone through right. and i've you know people are like you're kind of unwell and I'm okay like, yeah. so now that you bring that up can we can, do you mind talking about the issues that you've gone through and the what, what, uh, yes, what like I can. So I do want to give a warning to the viewers or people listening. There is some kind of tough subjects when I talk about this. Okay. So um, just a warning. If it's not comfortable, it's fine. But yes. I just wanted to give that. So I was at a school before here and I was getting sexually abused by a strength coach, Okay. which was awful. And I went to Title IX and I went to the police. I've done we did the investigation, that sort of thing. And they basically just said, there's no evidence. So sorry, I didn't get any resources. 
there was no therapy, no nothing. And I got to a point in my life where I honestly wanted to not be here. And mm-hmm. I almost attempted when I was a freshman. So that was a really dark place in my life. And I feel like if I would have had someone there, like an advocate talking about resources and helping me out, yeah. I would have been able to get therapy and maybe like get through that. But I transferred here mm-hmm. and I love everybody here. Yes. I was able to get um, therapy immediately and I'm still in it and I'm so grateful for that. And I'm also on uh, medications for my anxiety and my PTSD that I was like, diagnosed with. But I think that just starting that conversation of it's not, you're not crazy. Nope. If you have something you've gone through, it's like it's that life. changes how your brain dynamic works and getting that help is so important. Oh, yeah. So I I just encourage people listening to like, if you need to talk to someone or get that professional help on the next level, do that. Do what's going to help you because it comes out on the field. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing well in your personal life, it's going to come out in your play. And, you know, you want to be your best, right? (laughs) So sometimes it does take getting that medication. Sometimes it does take talking to your teammates, your coaches, to anybody Mm -hmm. just about what's going on. But that's kind of like my story and why I'm so passionate and here today because I want to inspire others to go get that help if they need it, you know? And I want to be a therapist someday. So I love it. Got a lot of of things I want to accomplish. You are a very strong woman for that. And just being here, you are, you're amazing. Thank you. Letting you know on that one. Oh, you too. Thank you so much. But um, the next question was some ways that I deal with stress. Do you guys want to also t- talk about this as well, like your yeah. ways? Yeah, we can all pitch in on this one. I kind of told you I love meditation. I do it every day, actually three times a day. That's awesome. <laughs> I- so I have my little meditation corner. I have my <laughs> crystals. I have my plants and my books and my journals. So, you know, and I listen to guided meditations and that's my thing. But what about you guys? Um, I guess the way I say it would handle stress is just, you know, when I start feeling myself stressing about something, I take breath, deep breaths, three deep, big, deep breaths. Yes. And I'm like, just breathe, breathe, breathe. You know, guided breathing. Main thing. Yes, guided <laughs> breathing, yes. So, yeah, I, I would say I do that and then just, you know, handle it in not a crazy way. Like, stay calm about it. Everything's going to be okay. Like, mm-hmm. you're fine. Just be okay. And I guess that's pretty much how I handle it, my stress. I don't wow. know. That is so nice. I wish I And could. drink some water too, you know? You just got to <laughs> hydrate. 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 Look what I feel. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I feel like my way of handling stress is pretty uh, It's pretty simple for the most part. You know, I'm, I like hanging with my friends. Uh, Jarek and Tone and Trey is a few of them. That, those are my roommates and stuff like that. Oh, nice. But honestly, I just attack life with the same equation. And it's E plus R equals O. And that's event plus reaction equals outcome. And obviously, we wow. can't, we can't right. control the event, right? But the way you react is above the line or below the line, and that controls the outcome, which is wow. above the line or below. So that's just the way I, I attack life in a in a daily manner. You know what I mean? It's just like react above the line. You know, make yeah. the positive the most positive out of any negative. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you can't control the event, but you totally. definitely can control your reaction. So wow, that is that equation. Who taught you that? Like that is so cool. I got it from my old friend. <laughs> that's I've never I heard really that like, before. Neither. I, love I really it. like I'm that one. Start saying that yeah. now. What that's, was it again? E plus R equals O. Event e plus, plus reaction. Oh, that's sick. I'm going to kind of like <laughs> start math. saying that to myself. With my <laughs> I don't know breaths. how I'm going to handle that one. <laughs> start using that when I take deep breaths in the meditation. E plus R equals O. <laughs> Doing like a math equation at practice. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, you know, we're all student athletes here. How do you, how do you guys balance being a student and an athlete and like, you know, when the time, like, it's your season right now. How right. are you, how are you balancing it right now? Uh, just, just still be aware of your priorities, right? Yes. You know what I mean? The things that matter. In, in the spotlight, obviously we all enjoy spotlight and things like that, but like, you can't get too caught up in it. You still mm-hmm. got to check the boxes that matter, right? Yes. And that's taking care of business on the field or on your field of play in the court or whatever. And obviously academics, you know yeah. what I mean? And everything else just kind of flows Flip. and naturally comes, you know what I mean? Don't get caught too caught up into like the, the hype, right? You know what I mean? Because then that's when you get lost and you you get confused as far as what you're doing it for. You mm-hmm. lose your motive and what's what's actually driving you. So yeah, that's your just head the way might I'm go going. a little left. Right. God, You'd be straight. You be my therapist, please. Let's do <laughs> right. He just says the right things. <laughs> I know. I, I completely agree. That's why I love him having my co-host. You know, <laughs> your math. Is that what you call it? Yeah. <laughs> friend from math class. Yeah, I'm my friend from yeah, math class. Well. <laughs> um, and how do you balance? You know, just being an athlete. Oh, good question. 
so I'm doing a lot right now. I'm mm-hmm. going to be completely real. I'm doing this internship and it's called Alliance for Eating Disorders. It's a great, it's honestly amazing, but you know, it's a job. So I have that and I have practice and mm-hmm. I coach and I have school. So that's a lot. That is a lot. <laughs> I like to pack my schedule and stress myself out. <laughs> um, what I do basically is I actually um, go into our student athlete. What is it called? The student center. Mm-hmm. And they have these like calendar things or weekly, like daily things for the football team. But I just take them anyways. Right. And I write down my schedule, every little detail for every single day and time. That's like awesome. I'm down to the time because I need to know like, what is going on and when to yeah. keep myself in check because if i don't have that or like a schedule or like a structured type of like calendar like i will go crazy right. so to keep myself calm and you know down to earth i just have to know what i'm going to do at what time and be very precise and exact with it and that's what keeps me kind of like keeps my head on yeah you know keeps me in the loop, which is really great. So I recommend doing that. (laughs) That's awesome. I do actually have a planner myself. Um, Good. I'm not down to the times yet, but you know, when it's with anxiety, I will put the the times, you know, (laughs) I might need them soon. (laughs) Oh, that's funny. Um, so we are on the topic of mental health, obviously. Of course. Um, how do you guys think like, mental health affects us on the court or the field you know what I mean like you brought it up a while ago when you're not personally when you're not mentally like stable you're not thinking right you know you just have these thoughts like how do you guys think that it affects us on the court like do you think it ruins our confidence like what is Do you want to go first for me uh yeah I'll go first um I feel like my sport is like my safe haven Mm -hmm. in a way and so um now, while it's possible to have like your mental health like affect you, you know, in the sport, it could negatively negatively affect you. Um, I just feel like this is where nothing else matters but this, you know, yeah. but the the play at, at hand, right? And mm-hmm. so, um, so yeah, well, like if I was to be dealing with any mental health kind of thing, like football would be my way to get away from things. Because once I'm in that play, you got bigger things to focus. You got to worry about somebody hitting you versus, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, home problems. And, and while those problems, they they still do exist, but yeah. like for that split second, nothing else matters. You know yeah. what I mean? And and I'm sure some of my teammates can, uh, can attest to this, that like even if you are having mental health and like you're hurt by something or you're mad about something, I mean, football is the best sport to take yeah. out a little anger. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get, I, and that's just the way it goes, right? It's true, it's true. And, and, that, and that's re- that's real talk right there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like these guys, are, we're hitting each other for a reason at some point. You know what I mean? This is fueled by a little bit more than just you know trying to go to the NFL and things like that. You know oh, yeah. what I mean? So. And what about yeah. you? Um, you know, mine's a little more complex with right. what I've been through. So I had trouble time going into weight rooms mm-hmm. when I, after everything that went down because my PTSD and that sort of thing would just flare up when I'd go in my anxiety. So I had a hard time with that for like a year. And then also with playing, it just, I associate, mm-hmm. associate softball with my trauma. So that kind of, that association was really hard for me to perform at my best because I was constantly having this anxiety. So in the, in January, I was talking to my therapist and she recommended that I try a medication, an antidepressant. And so I was kind of skeptical because mm-hmm. I've heard people like, you know, the stigma behind it. Yeah. But after trying it and getting used to it, my confidence was like never before. That's we awesome. entered conference and I felt like I was unstoppable. It was like the craziest feeling. Right. So with therapy and like my medication, I was able to get through that anxiety get that ptsd that i had and that association and like play at my highest potential and it was just the most amazing feeling ever and that's why i always talk about like if you have something that's gone on in your life or going on maybe it's worth talking about so you can play at your best potential mm-hmm. because you're gonna if you have to like feel good to play good right yeah and so, look good and look good yeah, period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that was really something that was so impactful and such a turning point in my life Mm -hmm. so you mentioned um what were your internships for what is your internships for um so my internship is called alliance for eating disorders so i'm in the advocacy program and we basically talk to members of congress we reach out to senators we uh write legislation and that sort of thing so i think also i see a lot of body dysmorphia Mm -hmm. in sports let's talk about that okay happens in men's sports, but a lot of times I hear it in women's sports. 
because there's a society standard of what a perfect body, looks body like. needs to look like. You got, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you go on Instagram and you're like, oh my gosh, like, ugh, I hate myself because you go to the weight room and they're like, get bigger, have your protein, like yeah. get stronger. <laughs> and then you go on Instagram and it's like, be skinnier, do this. And I'm just like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And so eating disorders are just, it's so high. Like there's so many in the sports world. And I think that's awful, especially with men's too. Like you need to look bigger, you need to look stronger, like that sort of thing. And it takes a toll on our mental health. And I think right. that's something that people don't really talk about. Mm -hmm. It's also taboo. So my goal is to talk about it, to right. bring it to people's attentions and to say like, no, like we should not have this issue. We should love ourselves. I mean, obviously that's easier said than done. Yeah. But it's really hard to do that when you have different standards being mm. thrown at you constantly. Yeah. So I like I don't know if you've had an experience with that or any of you guys know. I definitely. I mean, like I said, again, we, we mentioned this last week, but um, just cutting 40 pounds in six months like I did. Wow. Yeah, it, it was it was it was some work. Now, obviously, there was a lot of hard work involved in that as far as just running and eating right. But wow. just being honest and I'm not no, you're uh, advising anyone else to do this, but like I had at least two times a week where my last meal would be at 2 p.m. Right. Wow. And so that was just that was my way of cutting the weight. Mm -hmm. That was for some football things so I can play and stuff like that. But I'm mm -hmm. fine. I was fine with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it didn't. But like, yeah. So like, I definitely was in, engaged in that kind though. of thing. Yeah. It was hard. And I just filled up with water. <laughs> now I well, look forward to the morning. Hydrate, hydrate. <laughs> right, right, right. And I look forward to the morning because I'm I'm waking up ready to eat the whole house. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. Wow, that's that's crazy though. Yeah, I I I understand. I have issues with it too. Sometimes I look at myself in the mirror and I'm just like, I don't like. I want to look like those Instagram models. <laughs> that sounds so. I find myself doing that too. So uh, as soon as I see myself or find myself doing that on social media. I exit out and I lock my phone, just put really? it to the side. Yep. And I go on with what I'm going to do. Like, mm -hmm. I think that's where we got to click. Hey, I'm her, I'm me. I'm yeah, not her. You know totally. what I mean? Totally. And like, you are so beautiful. Like, I know that sounds like, uh, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> like, just knowing that, like being aware, like, you know, you like, and you know girl, you too. got that confidence. <laughs> I know, like just having that confidence is just amazing. But I think also that leads into something else I was really wanting to bring in up or bring up today men's mental health and yes. the stigma behind I love it. that. Right. Now that is a subject that I think nobody talks about. Right. I never hear about it on anything. Right. I hear a lot about it with like women's mental health, which is amazing, obviously, but in sports, men's mental health and like the mentality of like, just, oh, just push through it, like be manly. Like mm -hmm. the phrase be manly in itself, just, just like, what? Like, what right. does that mean, you know? Yeah, I mean, obviously it just comes with like a, well, I don't know if the word would be stereotype. You yeah, know I mean? totally. And, uh, it's a, it's a fine line with it, right? You know what I mean? You don't want to look like you're complaining or you're totally soft. Or... soft. You know, that's that's a tough word that um, that you don't want to look like, obviously, as a man. You know, in society, right? Yeah. You know, I'm not saying that it's totally. not okay for a man to be soft. You know, that's uh -huh. between them. But um, yeah, like that. Like, and I see that nowadays. You know, they're trying to like this conversation is starting to come about. Yes. About men's mental health and, and us speaking out and things of that nature. So, and I and I'm all for it. You know what I mean? But again, I I'm definitely one of those type of people that try to keep that kind of stuff at a minimum, and just try to focus on my sport. You know what I mean? Because like totally. it, it is a fine line. You know what I mean? You don't want to look soft, or you don't want to look like you're weak, or like you can't practice. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was in a, a sack meet not too long ago. Uh, the student athlete kind of committee. You're in that too? Yeah, I am. Oh, nice. I and we were talking about like the <laughs> mental health stuff. And then they mentioned an idea of um, having, I believe like two times, like two days a month or something where you can just say you're not going to practice. Oh, whoa. Because like, like take a mental day, a, a mental health day. That's and awesome. it's like. I'm here for it, honestly. But on the same note, like I'm not about to mispractice you know what oh, i mean oh i'm not either you know but like I mean? you but know i don't think none of us are to each his own I mean, i'm like here for football, it yeah. you, you need to you know work to get better every day and that's just our mentality and that's our motto so like totally. even that one day even that 24 hours you know you're kind of behind yeah. so i just mean like if someone has like a panic attack like i feel yeah. like that could be really useful because you don't know what's going on in somebody's life exactly you know what i'm saying like something could come up you th everybody is always having there's always a battle that someone's battling and you don't yeah. know it like you don't know someone's story right. maybe one day they wake up and they're just like i can't get out of bed you know right. maybe that's yeah, the like, one day that they can just and that's can like people sometimes try to talk about 
depression is just like, oh, I feel sad, but that's not it. Mm -hmm. Depression is so much deeper than that. It's right. like you said, I, I can't take care of myself. Mm -hmm. I can't do anything. I can't eat. I can't, you know, that sort of thing. The simplest thing. And that's things. just, that is the reality of it. And we need coaches and NCAA and people higher up to be aware of that mm -hmm. because it's not just someone being weak or not just right. someone just being lazy. giving up. It's a real thing that affects your life. And we can't, like, we cannot lose people because of this. Right. At all. Like this, mental health is so serious. And I think it should be taken, like, as serious or more serious right. than, like, physical injuries. You know, someone gets An hurt their ankle. Injury. They're like, oh, whoa, whoa, this huge old thing. But then someone, like, is battling uh, depression or anxiety. And it's just like, oh, like, they're just They'll lazy. Be fine. They just need to get yeah, through it real quick. Just, hydrate. <laughs> <laughs> what it's it just like how do you get to the point where you're going to decide what's more important than the other you know because yeah. this should be as or more important in my opinion but right i think there's a lot of opinions of that though, too yeah totally and i just think like circling back to like men's mental health like we need to take men seriously when they are struggling and right. what i want to do is like create outlets for men to go to because the stigma of their friends like oh like i mean you were even saying like right. oh you're soft like is it soft? well I, i'd never no, no, say i know so i know you're soft, saying you know that I mean? but like if someone makes fun of you right. for like something that you're going through or right. just like dude like chill or i don't know but you know what i'm saying yeah right. like that's not going to validate your feelings and no, bro pull through come on yeah yeah like <laughs> and that's no like, man i can't up, <laughs> like no it's actually way deeper than that <laughs> i actually need a therapist like no, like yeah. literally right. and, there should be more resources and more outlets to get that help, you know? Yeah. And so that's kind of what I really want to work for in SAC. So maybe I'll bring it up next yeah, meeting. <laughs> I'm kind of sad I can't go to SAC because I have classes. I mean, but, we could try to make you a part of it okay. if you're cool enough, but I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, was, I'm trying to think who was the women's basketball representative there? Um, they're the freshmen, some of the freshmen. Uh, oh, yeah. cool. Okay. Okay. But we should bring that up, honestly. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. But um, I just think this episode was great to talk about that. And I think that athletes, if you're listening, it's so important that you take care of yourself, not only physically, but also mentally. Like having your teammates, having your coaches, someone that you're comfortable with to go talk to about just anything because it builds up over time and it will affect how you play. And you want to play at your best. I know yeah. you do. Mm -hmm. So do we, right? Yeah. We all want to do our best, obviously. But we can't play at our full potential if we're not mentally here, you know, and present in the mm -hmm. moment. So I think that that outreach is just really important. So I got a question for you ladies. Um, how do you work through... Um, having a bad game or a play didn't go your well. Um, so what's your response like after that game? You know, if you had a bad game, what are your emotions now? Literally, if you have a bad game and like, you're, that's all that is in your head. Like, yeah. I could have done this. I, I could have done that. Like, yeah. I could have stole the ball to win the game point. You know what I mean? To pass, you know, just little things like that. And like, I don't know. I just, I, I just, find myself next game. Like, I can't control the yeah. pass anymore. Like, right. if I could, I would, but I can't. So just move forward, be positive. I guess that's how I kind of handle it. Yeah. And again, it, uh, again, it goes back to the E plus R e plus old <laughs> thing. Equation. And so like, Met honestly, I just got that, like the mentality of greatness, you know what I mean? And so I don't even want to dwell on the good things. So say I make three plays and mm -hmm. mess up two. So, so we got a total of five, right? I did good on this a higher percentage. The math. The math I, I did good on a higher percentage of the plays. I'm not worried about the three plays that I did good. I want to fix those those two because I want a yeah. perfect game. So mm -hmm. obviously my response is definitely going to get back in the gym or in, like back in the stadium and stuff like that and just work harder and work to fix those things that you messed up on. So like mm -hmm. to any of my athletes, man, just keep grinding, keep working. I know it sounds generic, but I mean, that really is the key. Honestly. Um, I seen a quote not too long ago where they said you can be grinding f for four years just to pop off the fifth year. So just keep grinding. And like I said, your time's coming. It's a process. Yes, it is. That's actually um, yeah. what Bolt said, I think. Yeah. I saw it on Twitter. Yeah. That, I like that quote a lot. Yeah. But I remember one game I was playing against Texas, and it was bases loaded, right? And I was okay. up. And guess what I did? Swung at three pitches in a row that were in the dirt. Just right. totally choked, right? I was like, <laughs> hurt. I know. oh, my God, I'm never playing again. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I quit. <laughs> I was like, I need to retire after this is tough. Yeah. But what I did when I went back, it, like I was thinking about it and I was like, 
mad, you know, mm-hmm. obviously. Yeah. But I wrote all of my emotions down in my like notebook that That's I bring awesome. with me, like every single emotion. Like I was pissed. I was just like, you know, writing in my burn Scribbling. book, that sort of thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I was just so mad, but I was able to get my emotions out and then take any breath after and read over it and mm-hmm. throw that page away because I can't control that now. Like you said, you can't control it. And that's so hard because I'm kind of a control freak and I Me wish too. I can go back in time. I wish, I wish sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, if I only would have waited for the good pitch. Well, you know, I didn't, so <laughs> I can learn, right? And so <laughs> yes. I could take this as a learning experience and not have that negativity bias where I only think about the negative things that happen because I did have good positives in mm-hmm. other games or other parts of the game. So yeah. if you walk around with that negativity bias, all the time and you're just focused on everything that you've screwed up, like it's going to weigh on you. So like, Oh yeah. Trying to also think about positive things that I've done or our team has done has helped a lot as well. So trying to just balance that out because it's so easy to look at the negatives. That's kind of how we're, that's how we are like as humans, Mm -hmm. we are so focused on what we could have done better. What can we do to do this? What can we get better at or whatever, but taking a step back and just kind of seeing the whole picture, is kind of just really helpful, in my opinion, to get through those times where you do well yeah. or bad or whatever. So, you know, it was just really great having you as a guest on our podcast. And I really appreciate you talking about, you know, your past experiences mm-hmm. and just how you deal with certain things in life and especially with COVID going on yeah, continuously. Totally. Um, I just want to let you close this out. Yeah. And you do you. Yeah, I have some resources that I actually was wanting to talk cool. about. But thank you so much for having me. This was honestly such a fun time with you guys. And I'm glad that we got to become vulnerable and talk about things that aren't really talked about. Mm-hmm. So um, I just kind of have a couple of resources that I wanted to talk about. Um, this fun Tomorrow Needs You by Andrea Pearson for mental health. And they're having a scholarship fund that they're building. They have a lot of mental health resources. And it's she's a great person to go talk to about that type of thing. So that's a great resource. Also, um, Lobo Respect for Sexual Assault on campus, online, they have their uh, number, they have their email, that sort of thing, as well as with the SHAC, Mm -hmm. the Student Health and Counseling Center here on campus. So if anybody needs that, it's online, as well as the suicide hotline number, um, 800-273-8255. If anybody out there is struggling or needs to talk to one immediately, but I just want to put that out there, but thank you so much for having me on here. You guys were awesome. And I hope to be on here again. Like that was so great. So that's really all. Thank you so much. All right, Lobo fans, uh, definitely was one of, one of our more serious podcasts and uh, definitely something mental health is something that's serious and we need to talk about. Uh, we appreciate you listening. Um, I want to give a big shout out to a few sports, uh, upcoming games and past games that they just had. So uh, big shout out to Lobo Volleyball for sweeping Air Force this Tuesday. Woo woo! Also, yep. <laughs> also, they play Fresno State this Thursday night. So if you're free, you have nothing to do, swing by and go show some support. Big shout out to our women's soccer team for having a conference game this Friday versus Wyoming. Um, also, have you heard about the Pride Pass? $50, and it covers all soccer, volleyball, baseball, softball, and track and field events. So, sounds like a good deal to me. You should swing mm-hmm. by and get you a pack. Um, also, Men's Golf is hosting the meet this Friday and Saturday. I'm a big fan of golf. I don't know. I, I, people probably didn't know that, but I am a big fan of golf. My swing is a little rusty, but hey, <laughs> do I swing the golf club like a baseball bat? I do. Well, but, listen, you need to go out there and see that. Exactly. Then. Go watch them. Also, swimming and diving is having their first meet this Saturday at Seedler Natatorium. Um, I'm not pretty sure where that is, but you can look it up. <laughs> I definitely do want to go to a swimming and diving Let's event. Let's do it. I definitely Let's do. do. It. This Saturday I have a game, but obviously any of the weekday games, I definitely will swing by. And football is having their next home game, October 2nd. Um, I believe we play Air Force here. Oh, wow. Um, this weekend, we do go to El Paso to play UTEP this Saturday. So uh, tune in. It may be a link to watch the game if you'd like to support. And we I'm definitely look forward down. to bringing home that win and going 3-1. and one. So yes. thank you again for listening to the Lobo Pod. We'll mm-hmm. see you next week. Go Lobos. Woo-hoo!